Good morning guys and welcome to another freezing cold blow down adventure. So um, yeah it's about four or five degrees. It's just um, oh it's just after seven or past seven. And in today's episode we are going to be catching grunters. I felt so bad um, because I lost the second episode of the 36 hour solo NASA mission. I decided to do another solo mission um, just to give you guys an extra episode. So it's still school holidays. Um, that's why I decided that I can quickly come out for a fishing session. But it's very cold. I'm going to have a cup of coffee just now. Trusty Stanley coffee. This thing keeps it warm for quite a couple of hours. So um, yeah. Then I'm going to show you a lot of stuff actually. I'm going to show you um, three different ways that you can present uh, by presentation in pilchards. I'm going to fish with pilchards today for granted. Um, and then also I'm going to pump a, pump a couple of prawns. I'm here at Sedgefield. I haven't fished Sedgefield a lot um, the last couple of years because we've been doing bear fishing and boat fishing but unfortunately water is still very dirty. So yeah, I've got two bags with me. I've got my chair with me. I've got my trusty old prawn, prawn pump with me. And then obviously the floaty um, product prawn bucket from uh, Lock. I'll show you a little bit more about that later and then also if you haven't bought a coffee yet not a coffee like that uh, donation coffee check the description there's a link in there click on the link you could me in chance for there's a couple of prizes this week uh, this month actually we've got the freedivers backpack um, then we've got a lot of lock products there's a, a lock hamper with a couple of st stuff in there um, is a hoodie and another blow down adventure of your choice spear fishing deep sea fishing estuary fishing uh, I'm not a big rock and surf fan, but I can hook you up with some people that will take us on that um, So yeah, the one back backpack has got all my cameras and drones and gear in there Then my other backpack ugh, has got all my fishing stuff in there And then I've got my prawn pump a nice chair And then this is a little trick that I want to show you if you have to carry a couple of rods and rod holders there's a cable tie there, there's a cable tie there, um, just makes it a lot easier to grab four rods, two rods holders in your hand if you're going to be walking, it's just a lot easier to walk with that. So, um, and then another thing guys, only 25% of you are subscribing and uh, please, please, please subscribe, hit that like button, um, leave a comment on what's your favorite break for granted. In this episode I'm going to be talking because I have some time, I'm going to talking about, a lot about interesting facts about grunters, um, record sizes, SA records, spear fishing records. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about all the baits you can use, the different traces you can use. So I'm going to do a whole documentary basically on grunter fishing. Um, I have spear fished one or two grunters, not that I was looking for them by chance. So yeah, I hope I'm going to be packing this episode with a lot of information regarding Granted fishing because I haven't done really a lot of info and something that I want to um, bring in on the channel is a little bit more detail about the fish, the legal size, the bag limits, um, areas that they come come from and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoy the episode. I'm going to have a nice little walk here at Sedgefield. Um, yeah, I always see the guys fishing from the side here and I haven't done this in a while. I've been here fishing with a kayak, never from the side, so it's going to be a first one for me. So um, and then when everything's set up, I'm going to have a like a like a like a coffee so thank you to everybody that has subscribed everybody that's donated um, the gecko we're just waiting somebody asked the other day why is the gecko's deck not done waiting for a couple of days days where there's not not um, so much rain in the air and uh, it's a little bit drier so that we can actually finish the gecko's deck but if you haven't checked the episode where we lost the, the bucky's key in the surf and we caught those nice big coppers and sunsets and romans go check that one out and if you haven't checked out the episode from uh, 36 hours of fishing the first episode where I slept on the boat in the middle of the winter that was freezing cold almost as cold as this morning go check out that episode as well but yeah today like I said we're going to do pilchard uh, bait presentation three different ways you can use the head you can use the belly and you can also use the tail the grunters the jimbras um, there's a lot of fish that actually love that that um, that type of bait so yeah let's get going so this is the first spot that we fished um, yeah but all my lines in the water and uh, my little chair with my coffee and everything set up but um, we're gonna move a little bit further down now because uh, I've been here for close to half an hour and no bites yet 
uh, not even a little tinkle so yeah I'm gonna move spots then um, and then I'll show you um, in the next spot I'll show you how to bait up with pilchard so I'm gonna get some fresh bait in the water and um, <clears throat> hopefully that changes it so the barometric air pressure is uh, 1041 today so you all know that I'll prefer to fish 1017 but I decided to come and fish uh, today to see what what happens maybe we're lucky and I've got some free time so I um, decided to come and fish and check out today uh, fishing like you can see it's kind of shallow water here in front of us and then there's a little bit of a channel that goes out further so um, got a couple of rods on the on the shallows and then I've got a couple of rods in the channel as well so yeah trying trying to see if I can find those elusive grunters um, yeah let's uh, let's move spots and then we'll see what so happens I promise you guys I'll show you how I bait up with a pulchet so the first part that I'm gonna cut out is the belly very tasty grunters and a lot of fish <laughs> there goes Evan there's Evie there's Evie <laughs> in the Riker van <laughs> right there's Evan okay yeah guys we we just spoke on the phone and we're definitely going out uh Friday spear fishing whether it is dirty water or clean water we are going out okay then the second part that I like to use is the tail uh, okay so there's your three parts it's not a little bit messy normally it's a little bit cleaner than that but yeah there's my three parts that I'm going to be using um so yeah let's go with the belly one first so what i'm going to do with the belly <clears throat> just get a hook here okay remember guys we're fishing for smaller fish so i'm using 3.0 circle looks normally i'll fish with 4 circle looks but a little bit smaller bait so i'll take my cotton and where's my hook now Oh yes Duke. So I'll, I'll just lie it in in there. I'll just lie the hook in there. I want the hook to be nice and proud at the end. So I'll just lie my hook in there. Take my cotton and start working it like that. And then I'm basically tying the bait to the line. So hopefully there's no blast opis here. I'm gonna tie all that there you can see that's the guts in the belly part that I'm looking for okay so I'm gonna tie all of that to my line with the hook sitting proud there at the end so when the grunter comes to swallow that bait the hook is still nice and proud there at the end oh getting nice and bloody yeah that's what you want okay, and I'll just tie all of that hey now don't get yourself to hook there just tie all of that up in there grunters, the umbras um, you can even use this as a little cob bait but shad, anything will pick up this little bait right there okay so that's the one bait that I'm gonna throw in now and then the other bait you've seen me use this method quite a lot when deep sea fishing is you tie a cotton around the tail make a nice little base there for yourself on the tail and then I'm just gonna hook just gonna rinse my hands quickly And uh, that one, what I'm going to do with that one is a little circle look, a little circle look through the tail there on that little piece of cotton, and uh, that bites that bites it nice and proudly. Um, yeah, beautiful little bite when the fish comes to swallow. Circle look in the corner of the mouth. Okay, so that's the two baits, uh, and then obviously the head, you can just hook it through the one eye, make sure that you comes out in the middle there in the hard part, so you catch a little hard part, or you can go through the mouth, out there, catch a little hard part there, 
um, but that one we'll use later on. I'm gonna quit, get these two lines in the water quickly. What we would do for fishing. We had to bundle bash through there. Um, we would do anything for fishing. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, move to the next spot. I like it here. Yeah? A little bit of a gully, deeper water. So we're gonna bait up and then maybe, hopefully, I can show you a fish now. Yeah, we move spots, or I move spots, not we. I moved spots because there wasn't anything happening for about 30 minutes um, when I pulled out the baits all the baits were cleaned so obviously a couple of small peckers there <coughs> but yeah <sighs> there was some bundu bashing now I've got wet pants uh, took out my took off my freezer suit and um, hopefully yeah let's get bait up again and let's get lines in the water again Okay, so guys, I promised you that I would include a couple of interesting facts about the spotted grunter. Okay, the spotted grunter is actually family of the um, white steambrus, and they fight in different different ways. The spotted grunter, when he takes, he'll come in and he'll fight close to the boat or close to shore. Whereas when a white steambrus, also known as a big nose grunter, will take the line and he will run out like a steam train. That's why it's also known as a swim train. So, yeah, there's a couple of names. A small spotted grunter, gespikkelde knorhaan, knorder, inkolo, kolo. Um, so, yeah, there's a couple of names for the grunter, but it gets its name from the sound that it makes. And when you catch one, you'll see when they, you get them out of the water uh, that they make a grunting sound. <coughs> that's the sound that they make, and that's actually where they get their name from. Um, so, they come, main, main, mainly you can catch them in the estuaries. Um, they go out of the extreme house to spawn in the sea 
And sometimes you do catch them offshore, and I've seen a couple of guys catching some big ones um, in the deep sea as well. But their main food is um, worms and prawns, so mud prawns, pink prawns, uh, snapper prawns, your swimming prawns, um, they'll eat choka, your bloodworms, sandworms, um, pilchard, yeah, anything of those. Uh, it's quite a, a fish that will eat most most stuff that you throw at them, they, they also feed on pencil bait and then you know, lindworm is a very good bait. But what's interesting for me in these fish is the different estuaries, they feed on different baits. So every estuary in our area basically has a, a specific bait that the grunters will feed on. Some estuaries they like the pilchard, some estuaries they have very good eating um, on lindworms. Like the breeder is a, a lindworm is a very good bait for breeder river. Um, Nisna they like eating more on choka. Um, Kleinbrak, I prefer like a pink prawn. So it's it's different baits for different estuaries. Um, they reach maturity at around about nine, uh, 39 centimeters. Legal size for them is also 4 centimeters. And the bag limit for them is actually 5, which is way, way, way too much. Um, so guys, please catch one or two for the bribe, but don't keep five fish. You can imagine if every angler that goes out there keeps five grunters, there, there'll be nothing left. So they reach maturity um, at about um, 39 centimeters and that takes them three years to reach that 39 centimeters um, and then there is a record for a grunty is 9.5 kilogram and that had a fork length of 91 centimeters and uh, that it was estimated to be around about 16 years old so yeah but guys please keep the back limits it is on the red list um, and keep to the legal sizes let these fish have a chance to spawn and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the little video in the background where I was actually catching grunters and not just showing you how to bait up for them. But it is winter months, so hopefully in the coming summer months I'll get stuck into a couple of nice grunters again. Okay guys, so I promised I'd show you how to <coughs> how the little float bucket from Lock works. So you've got two buckets. One's got holes in it and the other one um, doesn't. So this one you fill with water. Oh, look at all these prawn holes here. I'm gonna pump some nice prawns now. So you fill this bucket with water and then the other one the other one it's got a little float around it. So these ones are available at extreme fishing. So you just put that bucket in it, make sure the foam goes around it and now you take the bottom one up. Now you take the bottom one and you carry it into the water with you and as you're pumping prawns it sits there nice you can fill it more with water it sits there floating nicely with you and you don't have to worry about your prawns when you're pumping prawns so and then yeah that just works a whole lot easier um, and all the dirt also falls through the little holes and you got just got your prawns there so I'm quickly gonna see if I can find a couple of those monster prawns which will does have beautiful prawns here so I'm gonna be pumping here in the shallows I'm not gonna go very deep I don't need my net today I couldn't carry my net with me today you don't want to pump too hard you actually want to suck them you're not sucking sand you're sucking water and there you can see there you've got your first beautiful prawn yo and there goes Evan again there's Evan <laughs> obviously Evan's work is done in Sechfield and there you can see a little prawn swims around in the bucket you can add an aerator to that if you want to um, yeah so that that was my first hole that I pumped. So, well, like I said, you don't want to push the pump down into the sand. You want to suck the water out of out of the pocket, out of the, the sand. Okay, because they're all connected. All these channels are connected. And you're just sucking the... the, the and by that way, also not disturbing the environment too much. Okay, so you just want to suck the water out of the holes. Okay. Normally around about, there's another one, around about three or four pumps. I don't need a lot of pawns today, I'm only going to pump about ten. But you can see here, as I'm sucking, the water is actually going away and pouring out there. So, ah, this one is a little bit too small. Let's put him back. Only uh, pump the pawns that you need. 
Okay, don't overdo it because you're gonna waste, you're gonna probably throw them away, they're gonna die. And if you're done with your bait, just um, put those that are still alive, put them back into the system. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is a bigger one. Okay, so there's a nice little one again. Okay, so now this method I've showed you many times before. Just pinch the tail, make sure you get both parts of the tail. I'm using a 2 0 circle look on this one. Make sure to get both parts of the tail and that way the prawn actually stays alive. It is very safe to fish this, this way because um, yeah, the fishing is very slow today and you, there you can see it's still alive. Um, so it will crawl around on the bottom. I normally fish like this with live bait uh, when I'm drifting but the fishing is very slow today so I'm just going to fish like that with prawn today. Um, yeah, I'm not going to stay very long. It is close to 12 o'clock now, so this will probably be my last baits that I cast. Um, so yeah, let's see if I can maybe, maybe catch a little grunt here. Um, let's see what happens. Okay guys, so unfortunately that brings an end to another blowdown episode. Um, yeah, not a lot of fish today, not any fish today. But it was beautiful being out here. I mean, just look at that. Doesn't that beat the office any day? So yeah, um, even though I didn't catch anything, I had a lot of fun. But I've got a long walk back <laughs> to my bucky. <laughs> so I'm gonna take cable tie everything together again and then start the long walk. Um, remember to subscribe, like, buy some coffees in the link. Hood is up for sale. Uh, again until the end of the month and I'm gonna order um, and then hopefully Friday fingers crossed we're gonna get in water and spearfish again we haven't done a spearfishing episode in three four months I think there's been rain and it's been water's been dirty and the gecko has been um, out of what do you call it out of service basically but the gecko is ready we haven't done deck yet but all in good time um, but luckily we've got our diving socks on when we're going out so definitely going out on Friday. Today is Tuesday. So hope to see you in the water on Friday and then hopefully we don't dive into the bottom because we have no vis. But we'll find some warm water. Spoke to Steph, Evan and Piet and all of them are definitely in. Uh, Evan's taking days leave and Piet's gonna get his building team going and then Steph will leave the restaurant to his trusty workers for the day and then we're gonna go out spearfishing so see you in the water on friday